it, who is spirited with will and determination, that is the word used to describe virtue. All of those things. And so this morning, I want to look at a story in the Bible about a, a woman who did not get boxed in. It, she did not get boxed in. And I, and I believe that both men and women, we can glean a lot from this story about a woman named J.L. Now, I'm just going to let you know, this is not a flowery Mother's Day story. Okay, so hopefully somebody is giving you flowers later because this is not like a typical Mother's Day story, but I think it's good. And here's the backstory. The king of Canaan, the king, his name is Jabin, with his army commander Sisera, they have been oppressing Israel for 20 years. The army commander named Sisera is cruel, and he's powerful, and he has been making life for the Israelites, God's people, miserable for 20 years. The Bible says that he had 900 iron chariots, like meaning this was like top-notch military in that day. Okay, so he had all of the props. He had all of the strength. He was the guy. His name was Sisera. And the Israelites have been in this, like, vicious circle where they would have a judge, and then something would happen, and they would walk away from the Lord, and then they'd cry out to God, we need help, or the judge would die, and we need help. So the Israelites are at this point. They've been tormented for 20 years. They cry out to God for help, and God sends them a new judge, and it was a woman. Her name was Deborah. She becomes the judge of Israel, and she has a unique ability to hear from the Lord. And so she goes to her own army commander named, I say Barak. You might say Barak. I say Barak because I'm from Rochester. And <laughs> I was in Atlanta this week, and this lady kept trying to pronounce her name for me. I think it was Lana, but I kept saying Lana. And she goes, no, Lana. I'm like, well, I don't know how to do that because I'm from Rochester. <laughs> So in my head, when I read Judges chapter 4, I say, Barak. And that's how it's going to be for today. <laughs> so Deborah goes to Barak and has a word of the Lord for him and for Israel. And she says that he is to create a small army, and he is to position himself on the top of Mount Tabor. Again, I could be pronouncing that wrong, but on top of the mountain. And God is going to deliver the enemy into his hands. God is going to hand Sisera over into Barak's hands. Judges chapter 4 tells us this and kind of tells us how the battle goes. Judges chapter 5 gives a little more detail. And in Judges chapter 5, we read that the Israelites did not have a shield or spear among them. So here they are going without a shield or a spear to face an army that has 900 chariots of iron. But this is the word of the Lord. And he's going to deliver the enemy into their hands. Barak, the man of faith, says to Deborah, if you go, I will go. That was his response. If you go, Deborah, that's the only way I'm going to go. And Deborah's like, of course I'm going. But now the word of the Lord is because of that, God's going to hand it over into the hands of a woman. And it's going to be the hands of a woman that gets the victory, which clearly wasn't very cool. So Barak goes and sets up. Sisera, he's the enemy, he's the cruel one. He gathers up his guys, and he meets Barak at that mountain. And this is where supernatural intervention, God shows up. Judges chapter 5 says, The earth trembled, the heavens poured, the clouds poured water, the mountains gushed, there was a torrent that swept them away. Like there was a mess of a storm all of a sudden. Torrential. Come 
loud and in charge. Jimmy, who's in charge of batteries? I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> oh, who needs batteries? Mama Bear, who is in charge of the batteries? Okay, okay. Life goes on. All of their strength and confidence are in these horses and chariots. God intervenes, sends this storm where they're stuck. The Bible says that they go fleeing. They abandon that their, 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 their horses and chariots, and Sisera's army goes running. More supernatural intervention from the Lord because now Barak and his men go running after them. The Bible says, I don't know how they did this. They took the weapons from Sisera's men and killed them with their own weapons. Completely routed them. What? Completely routed them. However, one man escaped. The man that you want to make sure is dead, that gives you complete victory. One man escaped. Sisera escapes. And he goes running to the tent of a woman named Jael. Now, Jael comes across very hospitable and welcomes him in and says, Here, have some milk. You must be tired. Take a nap. Here's a blanket. Agrees to stand guard. So that he stays safe. And that is where we're going to read. Judges chapter 4. We'll pick up where Sisera fled. Verse 17. Sisera had fled away on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin, king of Hazor, and the house of Heber the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, turn aside, my lord. Turn aside to me. Do not fear. And when he had turned aside with her into the tent, she covered him with a blanket. Then he said to her, please give me a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. So she opened up a jug of milk, gave him a drink, and covered him. But that's what everybody wants when you're thirsty, right? Like a good old glass of milk. Yes, my thirst is quenched. Verse 20, and he said to her, stand at the door of the tent, and if any man comes and inquires of you and says, is there any man here, you shall say, no. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand and went softly to him and drove the peg into his temple and it went down into the ground for he was fast asleep and weary. So he died. Happy Mother's Day. Hope you get flowers somewhere else. And then as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him and said to him, Come I will show you the man whom you seek. And when he went into her tent, there lay Sisera, dead with the peg in his temple. Talk about show and tell. So on that day, God subdued Jabin, king of Canaan, in the presence of the children of Israel. And that is the story of Jael. What a woman. My hero. It's interesting because the Bible says that she's the wife of a particular man And that particular man was friendly with the enemy king. They were allies. They were friends. They were at peace with each other, which um, is my guess why Sisera even went to that tent to begin with because he knew this is a buddy of mine. This is a safe place to hang out. It's also interesting, though, that J.L.'s husband, being a, a Kenite, had ties of loyalty with the Israelites, with God's people, because They were descendants of Moses' father-in-law. So Jael and her husband were were related by marriage to Moses. And yet earlier in Judges chapter 4, it tells us that, this is very interesting, uh, we might get to later, very interesting though that it says that Heber, Jael's husband, had separated himself from those ties. And so here we have Jael with this situation where if she, she has a choice to make, either I'm going to hide this man, Sisera, and prove to be friends with the enemy, or I'm going to deliver Sisera into the hands of Barak and be friends with 
Israel. And by reading that, we know what Jael decides. Mama bear comes out of this woman, right? Like m- something happened in her where um, hospitality is really not her gift. Come on in. I don't know what else to do, so I'm just going to take a hammer and a tent peg. Mama bear came out. This is a man. That's the enemy. She takes the hammer. She takes the tent peg. Nails him into the ground. And then waits for Barak to show up and see what she's done. Hello. I think there's some things we can glean from what J.L. did. First and foremost, let's ask ourselves the question, what are you going to do when the enemy comes to your doorstep? What are you going to do when the enemy comes to your doorstep? Sisera came right to her house. Right to where she lived. I mean, she could have tucked him in and had breakfast waiting for him in the morning. She could have just walked away. This isn't my problem. I'm not trained or equipped to deal with this. There's others that are more qualified than me. I I just don't want to deal with this. She could have left the situation in somebody else's hands. What are you going to do when the enemy comes right to your doorstep? God bless them. And God said to them, have dominion. Have authority. Defend and stand up for what is yours, what is your family's, what is your spiritual destiny, what belongs to you. Have dominion. Have dominion. There, there's a story in uh, 2 Kings chapter 4 about the Shunammite woman. Now, she has always wanted to have a child, and she's not having a child. And the prophet Elisha comes through her town, and she begins just serving the prophet, so much so that they make a room in her house for the man of God, Elisha, that any time he comes through, we have a place for you to stay. While he's in town, he prophesies over this lady who wants a baby so bad and says, you are going to get pregnant. She goes, please do not say that. That is too hard for me to deal with. I've never been pregnant. He prophesies over her. Guess what happens? She gets pregnant. She has a baby. She raises her child. However, at a stage in his young life, death comes to her doorstep. Death comes right to her doorstep. Her child that she had waited for for forever dies on her lap, New Testament. Dies on her lap. And the Bible says this in 2 Kings. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door behind him and went out. That's what she did. Well, she went out, and guess what else came out? Mama bear came out. This woman went into like uncommon faith mode, mama bear faith, where something in her rose up and said, this is not over. And so she put her child, her dead child, in this room, and then she leaves. Where does she go? She goes to find the prophet Elisha. Elisha tries to send a servant. She goes, no, I'm waiting for you and only you to come with me. In fact, before she left, she starts getting ready, and her husband says, where are you going? What is her response? It is well. Say, what? It is not well. Your child just died on your lap, and she prophesied over her situation, it is well. And she went to find the man of God, the prophet. This woman knew how to war, New Testament. She refused to be denied. She refused to give in to the enemy. She refused to let hell have her family. She refused to quit. She refused to give up on what she believed God had spoken to her. Her son lived because of that faith. Her son lived because Mama Bear came out and Mama Bear got to war over her family. Mama Bear had dominion. This is not over. That's what happened in that woman's life. What are you going to do when the enemy comes to your doorstep? When the enemy tries to make an entrance into your home, into your family, 
into your relationship. When the enemy knows maybe I can't do something with you, but I'm going to go after your child. What are you going to do? JL could have said, this is the army's job. Not my problem. When Sisera came to her doorstep, this is up to the army. Sometimes you're like, this is up to somebody else. This is the church's problem. This is the school's problem. This is the stuff. How sometimes we just try and shift it away. JL could have coddled that man, stayed hospitable with him. And I think sometimes we do that in society and with our kids and with people. Oh, it's no big deal. It's just kids being kids. Well, no. God gave you those kids. God gave you your kids to raise them, moms and dads, no matter what age. So either I'm going to war for them because they're not in my house anymore or they are in my house. And guess what, Becky? You're about to have a child in your house. You're the mom. Kevin, you're the dad. God gave you guys the privilege to care for this child that's about to come. You know what's right, not the child. How often do we say, oh, they're just a kid. Let them decide. They can't decide they're a kid. I'm 38 and I still can't decide. Help me out. And we look away. They're just kids being kids. I've known parents. Here, here's a condom. You're going to do it anyways. What? Not in my house. This is not how we live our lives. Mama bear has got to come out in us and in the men. The mama bear faith. So in Judges 4, we read that Jael's husband had separated himself from his spiritual descendants. And Jael, mama bear, oh, no. Not my house, not my family, not my destiny. No, no, no. What are you going to do when the enemy comes to your doorstep? I, I just want to remind you that you already have everything you need to overcome. You already have everything you need to overcome. JL took what was available to her, what she already had. It was no fancy weapon that killed this great, cool army commander. There was no intense training. She had a hammer, and she had a tent peg, and that's what she used. She stepped into that uncommon faith mode where she positioned herself with the will of God. Where have you positioned yourself? So often we position ourselves in doubt. We position ourselves in what is expected of us because of what other people have told us. We position ourselves in, uh, let's be honest, in that which is just comfortable and easy. It's just easier not to deal with that. So often we position ourselves in that instead of positioning ourselves in faith, Positioning ourselves in prayer, positioning ourselves in the word of God, positioning ourselves in grace, positioning ourselves in truth, where Jesus says that you are overcomers, positioning ourselves in truth that says I am called, I'm anointed, I'm chosen, I'm loved, I'm free, I have liberty in Jesus. Where have we positioned ourselves? See, the enemy knows, and we talked about this last week, the enemy knows we're unstoppable when we awaken to who we are in Christ. He's afraid of you. There is freedom in our God-given identity, and this is what freedom does, New Testament, and unleashes confidence. Freedom unleashes confidence in our lives, which is where courage and where boldness and where resilience come because freedom unleashes confidence in our lives. You see that with JL. She had confidence. All I have is this hammer and tent peg. That's all I need. Freedom unleashes confidence. All I have is prayer and God's promises to me and my faith and my prayer language. That's all I have. Well, great, because that's all I can need. And our cell phone. Freedom unleashes confidence. And so Sisera's strength and confidence was in his army and in those chariots. Where is your strength and confidence? Because we already have everything we need to overcome 
in Christ Jesus. It's very interesting. Jael was just going about her normal routine. Just another day in the life. Expecting nothing different in her day when Sisera shows up to her doorstep. And now she's in the Bible, which is kind of a, kind of a big deal right there, you know, making the Bible like, all right. But how often do we go about our day-to-day, our routine? Just another day. Just same old, same old. Just the huge. Nothing different today. Nothing out of the ordinary. And that's great. We need to learn to serve Jesus in the day-to-day. But sometimes that day-to-day can lull us spiritually. Or we get lulled to sleep, spiritually speaking, in the day-to-day. But I want to just encourage you and remind you, because we see this in Judges with JL, when God breaks in. When God breaks in on an ordinary day, it becomes anything but ordinary. When God breaks in on your day-to-day, on your use, on the norm, it becomes anything but ordinary because God takes the ordinary and he turns it into something supernatural. It was just another day when the disciples were out fishing and they caught so much fish that it sank their boat. It was just another day when a mom packed a lunch for her son and it got multiplied and fed thousands. It was just another wedding when Jesus turned the water into wine. It was just another prayer meeting when the sound of a mighty rushing wind came in and tongues of fire appeared, and that was the birth of the early church. It was just another prayer meeting. It was just another battle for the Israelites. But when God breaks in on an ordinary day, on your ordinary day, it becomes anything but. It becomes anything but ordinary. God specializes in taking the ordinary and making something extraordinary happen. God specializes in taking the ordinary and making something supernatural happen. It was just a lunch. It was just another day fishing at work. It was just a hammer and a tent peg. For David, it was just a slingshot. But what might seem ordinary in your hands becomes extraordinary when you put it in the hands of God. When we put it in the hands of God. And so God directs and moves so often where we're not even aware of it. And we see that with Jael. She had no idea what was about to happen. But she honored the Lord. I, I found it very um, kind of cool the other day. I was, I was in Atlanta this past week, and I was coming home, and um, I sat next to this lady who was really friendly and talkative. And then we'd have, you know how it's like you talk, and then you kind of have your patches of silence. So, so I had my iPad out just to work on some notes for today. Um, but I had brought a book with me in case I had time to read. And for whatever reason, I took it out of my bag before the plane took off. So I wouldn't have to bend over and try and fall, you know. And I knew, like, I wouldn't have time to read it, but I got it out anyways. I don't re- I, I honestly have no idea why I took the book out. Like, no idea. Look out. No idea. Take the book out, put it in the sleeve in front of me. Maybe halfway through the plane ride, this woman next to me starts talking about how she, um, she's a dentist, but she also, like, teaches yoga. And she goes, oh, that's a very interesting title of your book right there. It was, it, it was a book um, on breaking free from guilt and condemnation. And she goes, that's a very interesting title right there. We talk about that in my yoga meditation. And I was like, oh, well, I mean, I think that uh, guilt and condemnation are not from Jesus. And we start talking. And so I'm like, here. So I grab the book and just show it to her to kind of flip through. I'm like, one of my college, uh, well, my college president wrote this book. Uh, he was a missionary. So I'm kind of just sharing with her the story. And she's flipping through. And she goes, I'm going to take a picture of the title uh, so I can look this book up later on. I'm like, take the book. Are you serious? Yeah, take the book. So now I feel like a really awesome Christian. I just gave a book away. And I can tell you that I did that. But later on, I'm like, holy Moses, Jesus, what did you just do? I, why did I take the book out? I don't know. But an ordinary day for me, no big deal. All of a sudden, i gave given this woman some Jesus to take home with her. Like, just an ordinary day. And how God breaks through and uses even our ordinary days. It's just an ordinary day. No big deal until God. Until God breaks in. I'm just taking my kid to youth group again. I'm just praying for my coworker. I'm just baking cookies for the neighbor next door. I'm just being kind to the cashier. That's what I should do. I'm just reading my picture Bible to my kid before they go to bed because this is what we do every single night. It's just another day. But your just another day 
when God breaks in, God shows up. He takes that, and he does the extraordinary, and he does the supernatural on our ordinary days. And it's not just ordinary days that God uses. It's ordinary people. It's ordinary people. So in the story of Jael, we learn that victory came for Israel through an unexpected source, a woman, in an unexpected way. And in our lives, victory often comes through unexpected sources in unexpected ways. So Deborah said victory was going to come through a woman. And as you're reading that in early Judges, you just kind of automatically think it's going to be Deborah. She's going to be the one that gets the credit. She's the judge. She's the prophetess. She's the one with clout. And here is J.L. She's really nothing. There's nothing to say about her. She's just home tending the tent. Sometimes we mistakenly think, if I'm not this or that, if I'm not like so-and-so, if I don't do this or that. And how often we have to be reminded with Jesus, it has nothing to do with you and your ability. It has to do with your availability. I'm willing, I'm obedient, I desire to honor Jesus because our highest motive should be to always honor God and what we do. So here's JL. She has her priorities straight. She goes against her husband. She goes against the enemy. She goes against all of that to honor God. And God uses that obedience. In fact, Deborah writes about her in the next chapter and says, most blessed among women is JL. Only other person that's said about in the Bible, most blessed among women is Mary, the mother of Jesus. Only other time. She obeyed, she honored Jesus. And victory comes through unexpected sources and in unexpected ways. And it came for the Israelites through this unarmed woman against the enemy. Let me end with 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Because it's not about me, it's about Jesus, it's about giving Jesus honor, it's about Jesus being glorified. So guess what, he uses the marginalized, he uses the weak, he uses the foolish, he uses things that everybody else is like, what is going on over here? Because he gets the glory. And he uses us. I find myself in that passage a lot, like, thank you, Jesus, you use the idiots. All right, here we go. He uses us to reveal his glory and to accomplish his plan. And so often, you might find yourself saying, well, who am I? I'm a nobody. Well, I'm a nobody, but I've also been created in the likeness and image of God, and I've been created with a plan, a purpose, and a destiny. God gave you value. And so we're same, and yet we're different. We're different and yet the same. But he gave you value, and he created you to add expression and to add flavor. And freedom unleashes that confidence that I can be Lori Bolton, who God has created me to be. You can be who God has created you to be. You can do what God has created you to do because of that freedom that he has given us. Freedom unleashes a confidence. And it helps us when we go into mama bear mode. I pray for us, men and women, that a mama bear faith would rise up in us, but more importantly, rise out out of us and be released to fight for, to defend, to take authority, to take back, and to take a stand, to have dominion in the spiritual sense for what belongs for you, to you and what belongs to your family. Mama bear faith. That's what God has for us. So I want to pray for you this morning that it would just be released 
in all of us because God has something for you. Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for JL, a woman who did something for you that was unconventional, not expected. And I thank you for faith in this church that takes a stand and fights for what you have for us, God. I thank you for that mama bear in your people that just comes out and fights for, takes dominion. So I thank you for that, Jesus. I pray, Lord, that we would not stay in our comfort zone, but the things that are lying before us, we would go after them. And I thank you, Father, for each and every young person that's represented here today and in our church and that we're going to be coming in contact with, the children being born into this church. We have mama bear faith over their lives, God, that we're not going to lose a single child to the enemy. I thank you for the kids who have been raised in this church. I thank you for the kids who are growing up in this church and are going to grow up in this church. And the world says one thing about them falling away. We thank you, Father. We are warring for their spiritual destinies. And so I thank you, Father, for men and women who are going to follow you all the days of their life. And I thank you for men and women who are going to spiritually go to war for their families. The young ones in the home still and the ones outside of the home. We thank you, Father, that they are not going to be lost. So just like that, you know, my woman said, oh, no, not happening here. We say not happening here. None being lost. Thank you, Father, that you have given us everything that we need. We love you. We worship you. We adore you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to all of our moms. If you need prayer this morning, please come up front. We have somebody who wants to pray with you, multiple somebody who want to pray with you. And moms, just so you know, free coffee for you today in the Good Cup. Get it on your way out. We love you that much to give you free coffee. Have a great day.